So good morning. Um, I will present a work that we developed with an assemblage dated from the 18th century that was found in Almada, and we'll see in a minute where Almada is located for the ones who don't know. Um, and it, it was, it's a, a glass assemblage dated to the 18th century, uh, and you'll see why was, this was a, a, a different um, decision that we, we, we did with this, with this assemblage. So Almada is located in the south uh, part of the Tagus River in, in Lisbon. And it, here on, I don't think we have a pointer, maybe this. So it's very, very close to the Tagus River. Um, and it is believed in the 18th century that it, this area was inhabited by people from the lower uh, classes. Um, this is the, the street where the collection and the assemblage was found. And we are seeing the, the it's a, an area with very narrow streets. It's an area uh, where the, the street nearby is close to the Jewish corner. So as we see, this is a, a place that it was inhabited from the 12th century at least. Uh, and we see here the location and the area where the, the assemblage was ex excavated. Not only glass was found, but also ceramics and porcelain. Uh, also everything dated to the 18th century and everything was closed in this, in this hole where we see the archeologist uh, excavating. Uh, so, I will dedicate this presentation to the glass assemblage and not talk about the other materials that were uh, found. Um, but what we wanted was to bring to light this incredible glass set that was found um, and to explore new ways to present and to show this um, type of material to, to, the, to the people. And also to understand how can this help us to preserve these uh, materials to our present and, and future uh, generations. We believe that is our social duty to share the knowledge that we acquire from the study of these assemblages with, with the outside the academic world because we all um, publish papers and books and book chapters. But And sometimes uh, this part of sharing the knowledge outside the academic world stays a little bit um, forgotten. So to show you, just a hinge of the glass assemblage. It's mostly composed by wine glass bottles. All, everything is dated from the 18th century. And also drinking glasses. And we see a variety of shapes and decoration, decorating techniques. Uh, and also other types of glass vessels. This is, we, you are seeing uh, objects already treated. And we'll see the process um, that it went by. And how did this work uh, evolve and how did this uh, project start? We have, um, so I'm, I'm an assistant professor at the Master of Conservation and Restoration. Um, and we have in the first year of the master a discipline called project. And as you see, project is a very broad uh, discipline and everything can fit inside project. And so I had six students and we need to develop a project. And since we are in Almada, we are very close to the Almada municipality. And we knew about this glass assemblage. And so we decided, why not go to the museum with the students and start treating uh, these materials? Uh, and when we saw the assemblage, uh, it was an immediate decision that this should be on display. We should do an exhibition with the material. And so all the treatments and all the decisions were made with this uh, with this point, with this objective, to exhibit the material. And so, briefly on the conservation part, what we did, first of all, because none was inventoried, so we need to inventory all the glass uh, objects. We need to clean uh, the material that was stable enough to be clean. And for the ones that were not stable, they need to be uh, consolidated. Here, our main objective was never to remove corrosion layers or to give an aspect that was not an archaeological uh, aspect because all the material is corroded, corrosion layers, and it's, it's broken. And so what we did was the least interventive uh, possible way uh, to conserve and to preserve for uh, the exhibition. So you see different parts consolidating, putting the, 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 the puzzle together, assembling the, the objects. For some, 
of the objects, they were not, they, they were not stable enough, uh, physically speaking. So we needed to do something here to make them stable enough to be exhibited. Uh, and the decision was whenever possible, and you see in this, in this case here, the whole part, more than half of the flask is missing, so it's not physically stable. And we decided not to fill that huge area because it would lose its archeological aspect. So we decided to create a system, as you see here in the middle, this is made out of glass to be, uh, not to be a problem uh, with the, the glass uh, base material. So we created the system just to support the other part to make it physically stable enough to be uh, exhibited. And the same situation happened, this is just another example, a wine glass bottle, a, a very big uh, missing part here. And so the old neck was very, very heavy. It was not stable enough, so we just made a small um, infilling here. It's a detachable infilling, so whenever I want, I can remove it just to make it stable enough physically to be um, exhibited. So the mission of this exhibition was to show this glass assemblage to everyone who wanted to go and see the exhibition, but we wanted to focus the local population because the local population in Almada is all the time very interesting, interested when they see uh, an excavation, an archeological excavation. And sometimes what happens is that, is that the material is excavated and go to storage and no one sees it. And so we wanted to give this back to the population. And we also wanted and try to show how the Almada inhabitants from former times lived and what did they use. Uh, we also use this opportunity to show the work that we developed at the faculty and what does our students learn and how do we approach this study of historical materials, obviously here focusing the glass. And also highlight the importance of preserving glass and what can we take from, what kind of information can we retrieve from these studies of, of glass for the present and for the future uh, generations. So all of the exhibition was designed by our students, obviously with the help of the museum staff and the archeologists that excavated the, the material. And we focused these aspects. We wanted to show how glass is made. So we devoted a part for the raw materials. We wanted also to show what recipes were used in the 18th century to produce wine glass bottles. We also wanted to show different shapes of these bottles because these bottles are a world and they have different shapes of necks, of bottoms and so on. Um, also the colors that exist among these wine glass bottles are very, very different shades of, of green, of brown. We also wanted to illustrate how this object is produced, obviously the archeological context, and we also tried to create an ambience where we showed how these wine bottles were present in the everyday life in, in, in people's houses. So the exhibition opened on the 9th of June and finished on the 31st of July. It was held in the Almada City Museum and it was of free um, entrance. And here, you can, I, I will just briefly guide you through the exhibition. We started with the raw materials, as I told you, and we just wanted to show how these raw materials look like. So more than writing what was used, show exactly what, what uh, glass makers used to produce uh, glass and especially the, the wine glass bottles. So we use the raw materials um, concerning the plants, not only the plants, but also the ashes that result from the plants. That is actually what we use to produce uh, the glass with a brief explanation of egg, what uh, these materials served for. And then we approach the color. Here you have to believe in me, <laughs> these glasses have different shades of green and the, the panel that uh, goes with this exhibition, with this part, shows and describes different, how the different colors in glass can be approached and why the, these different colors appear. And then we approach the different uh, shapes of the push-ups. These are very important when we try to date or study the provenance of a wine glass bottle. The shapes and the way the push-ups in the, the bottoms are made can be very helpful dating and 
and understanding the provenance. And they are all different from each other. So we now look at wine glass bottles from nowadays in our homes. They look almost all the same and they have the, the standard measures. So in the 18th century, it, it was not like that. Every bottle had its, its size, its shape. Um, as we can see here, so when we move to the shapes and to the evolution of the shape of the bottle, we can see different shapes, different colors. These are the different shapes of the bodies, and this can also be associated with different um, liquids they were made to contain. And the different necks, as you can see, they are completely different in terms of, of shapes, one from another, and this can help dating and, and understanding provenances. And we also wanted to show the different aspects of the archaeological materials. So when we excavate all materials, they have different corrosion layers, different aspects, and we also wanted to show this and to keep uh, this for, for the audience. This is, was a display that we used to sh to, with uh, two glass recipes to produce wine glass bottles, and these were retrieved from um, a Portuguese uh, recipe book from the 18th century to produce wine glass bottles that was used in uh, the Portuguese uh, glass factories from uh, this time. And here, the students made drawings explaining how the shape of the bottle was obtained in this period, so no machines on the 18th century. And finally, we created this ambience where we showed, uh, obviously, with the intent of showing the material, so it's not crowded like it was in a home, but we showed the, the, the material inside uh, a created living room, so with the, with the wine bottles, with the, with the drinking glasses at the table. Um, and most important, how the bottles can be placed inside the home and this explains why the bottle the shape of the bottle evolved from the onion shape to a cylindrical shape because it needed to be stacked for the sake of, of space inside houses and, and other uh, places finally we we have the the archaeological context it's in it was in the middle of the room so we, if you entered from the right or from the left the archaeological context was present um, in the middle, so you can see the exhibition in either uh, way. This um, exhibition was also, uh, we used it to engage different publics, so we organized talk sessions and guided visits. We, during the period the exhibition was on, we organized three different uh, talk sessions followed by um, guided visits. <coughs> We'll have an next exhibition. It will open on the 17th of, sept of September, so in two weeks from now, in the library of our faculty. Um, and we'll use this opportunity to release the catalog of the exhibition. And we also organized other different talks in this, this time to engage the faculty students. So we have now a complete, completely different uh, public. And I would like to thank you for your attention. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.